We're going to also say the Pledge of Allegiance, too. <laughs> they went crazy. You can't pray in a building that receives tax dollars. We're the Kennedy Center for Performing Arts. And I'm like, whoa. Sue me. So, after being in my basement, clinging to my 45 caliber Sig Sauer, I decided, <laughs> we're going to pray anyway. Yeah, yeah. So that's what we told them. And Kennedy Center, arrest me. Arrest me. Because we're going to pray before, during, after, maybe spontaneously. We might even sing a few prayers. <laughs> Just because it really will agonize you. So let's see what we have. In America, we have the president making sure that you can build a mosque that's in poor taste, lecturing us about the Constitution. But at the same time, I'm told you shouldn't pray at the Kennedy Center. In fact, they told me at first I couldn't, but then I think they remembered who I was. <laughs> and uh, they knew it wouldn't end well for them. Then we have a group of Christian students that found uh, in May that they can't discreetly pray on the steps of the United States Supreme Court building. On the steps, they can't do it. Their prayer was abruptly cut short as they were ordered to stop praying on the grounds. Is that, Mr. President, in step with regular America? Is that America? Is that? Is that in step with the Constitution? Is that in step with, uh, what did you say about Muslims? Oh, oh yeah, that people have a right to practice their religion just as anyone else in this country. How do those thoughts line up, Mr. President? Who is it, who is it, honestly, who is threatened by people praying outside of a courthouse? I don't care what religion, who is that hurting? Who walks by like, oh my gosh, I'm so offended, I'm scarred for life. How does that happen? By the way, they were praying for the Supreme Court and the decisions they need to make, and also praying for our congressman, who, who in Washington thinks that's a bad idea. Especially religious zealot like Nancy Pelosi, you know, from San Francisco. She was just telling us not long ago about her favorite word. Here it is. My favorite word is the word. Is the word. It is. And that is everything. It says it all for us. And you know the biblical reference, you know the gospel reference of the word. And uh, that word is, uh, it, we have to give voice to what that means, the word. Isn't it a beautiful word when mm. you think of it? Mm -hmm. It just covers everything. Word. <laughs> you know, <laughs> fill it in with anything you want, but of course we know it means uh, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. <sighs> she seemed so sincere there. Now surely a Christian warrior like Nancy Pelosi would appreciate extra prayers, right Nance? So what sounds more American? A group of people praying for our leaders or the feds coming in saying no prayer? In regards to prayer, which one is more American? The president was silent on all of these things, but when a mosque was going up next to ground zero, he springs into action, tosses his hat right into the ring. Who is this president in step with? I mean, besides Hamas. I know he sternly referenced the Constitution and our founders, but does he even really understand our founders? Has he read, oh, I don't know, what we used to call a book about the founders? Thomas Jefferson, do you think he discouraged public prayer? Come on, Mr. President, call me, call me up. <laughs> did he, did he? All of the progressives tonight, I just want you to know, Thomas Jefferson was the third president of the United States. He was the principal author of something called the Declaration of Independence. It's a very big document. They had very large notepads. Hard to go to school those days. This is the actual, this is the actual document. People will be like, he's got the actual document. He's just throwing it around. Shh, shh. I'm going to Washington next week. I'm switching it. All right. Declaration of Independence, Thomas Jefferson. He wrote, he knew a little something about freedom and religion. Now here's something you probably never heard before. Did you know that this building, do you even recognize it? That was the Capitol building. Do you know that on Sundays it served as a church gathering place? Yeah, believe it or not, the most regular attendee you'll never guess. He had a designated seat there just for him. Thomas Jefferson. 
He wouldn't even let the rough weather keep him from missing service. He was so dedicated that he'd get on horseback and ride in the driving rain so he could get there. So it stands to reason that he wouldn't have trotted over. You know, the guy who wrote this would have trotted over to the students praying on the steps of the courthouse, if the courthouse had been there, and tell them to stop before they offended anybody. And he would have done it not just because it would have made him late for the church service he was attending inside the Capitol building. I don't know anybody who's offended by prayer. I don't know anybody who's offended by all of this stuff. You know, I started at glenbeck.com, 15 minute spiritual thought of the day. It's not just for Christians or anybody else. It's just, uh, today I had a rabbi on, Rabbi Lappin. I don't know if you've ever heard of this guy. He's brilliant, brilliant. Well, how did you pray with him? He's Jewish. Ah! I know. You know, we have a lot more in common People of faith have got to start standing together. I don't know how people can feel so threatened by faith. I really don't. I hate to tell you, when we need help, we all call to the same guy. You can put your hands over your ears and say, la, 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 but you know what? It's not going to change reality. There are things that need to be said, things that need to be said. One of them is we really been, you know what I'm saying? We should call him. He's doing what I do every day. He's like, they don't call me. They don't call me. Here's some other things that have to be said, and nobody wants to say them, but they have to be said. Nobody wants to hear them. First one, we're broke. We can't keep spending. We're broke. Game over. Two, no one's going to ride in to save you. No one. There's no hero. In the, it's going to be you in the end. You see the scene in Pakistan? People were waiting in line for AIDS from floods, and they were complaining, how come the AIDS not here? Look, when America is gone, Who's going to save the people in Pakistan? See, we got to change this one because we're the ones that always ride in to save people. The third one is we're not an empire. People think we are, but we're not. Empires don't take crap from other countries. France, we would have obliterated a long time ago. We're not an empire, but we may be Rome because we are not immune from suffering the same fate as they did. You know, they were amazing as well. They brought innovations such as the state-of-the-art construction abilities. They were able to build enormous, enormous bridges over the Rhine and the Danube. They finished a bridge over the Rhine in less than 10 days. Look at that. You think we could do that? They didn't have unions back then. Trick question. They created a road system so sophisticated that road travel times didn't decrease until the invention of the steam engine during the 19th century. And of course, the Colosseum which I think this would have been cool. You know, they filled this with water, they think, and they could reenact naval battles. I mean, these people were, I mean, okay, they did feed people to the lions, but that's a different story. They created massive aqueducts. They brought us a calendar with a leap year. This was an empire. The world emulated these things, and we still use a lot of these things today. But when they went away, they still went away. Don't you think anybody might have said, oh, we're Rome, we'll never, and they ended. Which was a good thing, because remember the lions. If we end, what is it the rest of the world takes from us? What else have we left? McDonald's? Coke? What is it? It's one thing, one thing that the world should take from us, but I don't know if anybody has it anymore. And it's the fighting spirit. It's American ingenuity. It's the never say never attitude. Let me ask you this, America, what's over the horizon? 